If you have not got to it, you'll get it right now. The topic today now is supernatural freedom through scriptural faith. Think about that. Supernatural freedom, scriptural faith, they go together. And it is the foundation of that, is the fountain of that, is the fortress we have. That with scriptural faith in the Lord, everyone will have supernatural freedom. We're looking at this on the three perspectives. Number one, number one, the foundation of supernatural freedom through faith everything through faith number two the fountain of sufficient fullness through faith and number three the fortress of steadfast fortitude steadfast fortitude by faith number one through faith Number two, through faith. Number three, through faith. We're coming to number one now. Number one, the foundation. What could you build without foundation? Where could you go without foundation? What could you have without foundation? We need the foundation. And from the very beginning, the Lord set the foundation. Even in creating the world, you have the foundations. And if the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? Number one, the foundation of supernatural freedom through faith. We're looking at Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 12. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods, all the idols, all the superstition of Egypt, will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. And then he tells us in verse 13, in verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a sign, for a token, upon the houses where ye dwell, where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. That's the foundation. They have to go through the blood. They have to be under the cover of the blood. They have to be under the covenant of the blood. They had to add the cleansing and the covering of the blood and it is the foundation. Whatever we get later, the blood of the lamb is the foundation. The sacrifice of Christ is the foundation. The sacrifice at Calvary and what Jesus did at the final sacrifice as a substitute as our salvation, our savior, that is the foundation of everything we have, the foundation of supernatural freedom through faith. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one is the peace and the pardon through saving faith. Saving faith. The faith that saves the faith that gets us out of darkness into the light. Pardon and peace through saving faith. Number two, purging and purity through sanctifying faith. Faith is many-sided. It's like the diamond. You look at it, this side, you see the salvation. And then you look at that, that side, you see the sanctification. And then you look at it another direction, and it's putting you into the strength in the power of the Holy Ghost. Number one is the pardon and the peace through saving faith. Number two, purging and purity through sanctifying faith. Number three, possession of power through strengthening faith. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're talking about the pardon and the peace through saving faith. When you come to the Lord, turning away from your sin, and you remove yourself, you remove your hands, you remove your mouth, you remove your eyes, you remove your ears, you remove your feet, you remove your personality. 
You remove your totality out of sin and you turn your back against sin. That's when the pardon of God and the peace of God comes to you. Look at this, Luke chapter 7. We're looking at verse 47. It says, Wherefore I say unto thee, as sins which are many are forgiven. There's the woman that came to Jesus Christ, the burden of her sin, the conviction of her sin, the heavy load and guilt of her sin broke her down. And she began to weep. And tears were coming out. And the Pharisee was saying, look at this. If Jesus had been a prophet, he would have known that this woman was a sinner. Yes, a sinner. That's why she was crying. A sinner. That's why she was weeping, a sinner. That's why the heart was broken, a sinner. That's why she was turning away and in her tears saying, I made a mess of my life in the past and I want a turning around. And she cried and Jesus said, her sins which are many are all forgiven. Look at verse 50. In verse 50, it tells us, and he said unto the woman, thy faith has Save thee, saving faith, saving faith. Thy faith has saved thee. Go, go in peace, forgiven, set free. Her faith set her free. She had pardon and peace. Pardon. And then the peace of God settled in her heart. When you come to the Lord like that, that's how you know you are saved. You are pardoned. And then the peace of God settles in your heart. We're looking at Romans chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 5. And we're reading here from verse 1. Therefore, be justified by faith. Our argument cannot justify us. You go to the court of law and then you argue, you argue, I am free, I am free. Your argument cannot justify you. Your lawyer that says, yes, my client is free. His argument cannot set you free. It's when you come in repentance. I bring no other plea. I have no argument. I look at the cross and I see Jesus Christ who died for me. I was the guilty one. I was the one that couldn't pay the price of my guilt and condemnation. But he on the cross died for me. No other plea but that Christ died for me. And then you are justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith. By faith. All by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now you are headed for glory. This grace is gone. Condemnation is gone. You are pardoned. You are set free. You are forgiven. And the peace of God coming from the throne of the Prince of Peace now comes in your heart. We have pardon and we have peace through saving faith. Look at number two here. Number two here, we're looking at purging and purity through sanctification sanctifying faith sanctifying faith you know some people do not understand they think faith is only for healing healing yes of course they think faith is only for deliverance deliverance yes of course but faith is for sanctification faith is for the purging of the heart faith is for the purity of the heart look at Acts chapter 15 verse 9 Acts chapter 15 verse 9 and he put no difference between us and them, between the Jews and the Gentiles, between the apostles and the disciples, he put no difference between us and them, between the minister and the member. You know, there are people that think that sanctification is only for ministers, only for the apostles. Well, what 
water drinking is not only for the minister, for the minister and for the member. Water drinking, the water of life and the water that washes and cleanses us and purges the heart and purges the soul that brings holiness into the heart of man. The water is not for only the ministers, it's for the members, not only for the apostles, it's for disciples, not only for the men, it's for the women, not only for the old, it's for the young. And he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, when it says purifying, there was a time Elisha was at Jericho. And, it, and the people of Jericho came to him and they said, The land appears good, beautiful. And, but they said, The water is not because there is poison in the water. And then he said, bring me a cruise of salt and threw to the very souls and the water was healed. The water was purified. It's a picture of the man that he looks beautiful on the outside. I am saved. I have peace. I have pardon. And then when you look at the outward life, true, gentleness has come. Humbleness of mind has come. Everything on the outside looks beautiful very well, but out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking, you see something coming out, you say, the heart is not, the heart is not pure, and you see the actions that come out of the heart, you see, the, the man looks gentle, and the woman looks gentle, and looks somewhere, but the thing coming out of the very source of his life is not, and then Christ touches that heart, purges that heart, and purifies that heart as you come. And you come with this level of faith, saving faith, your heart at salvation, sanctifying faith, you now have at the point of sanctification. He purges you and he purifies you, purifying their hearts by faith. Look at um, Acts chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18, to open their eyes. Was he talking of physically blind people? No. It was talking of people that read Isaiah chapter 53 and they didn't see Jesus there. He was talking about people that read the Exodus chapter 12 and they didn't see Jesus, the Lamb of God, that they were blind. And they read some two and they saw that the Father, the God of heaven, spoke to his son. They didn't see Jesus in the scriptures. Now tell me, Philip, who is this scripture talking about? Is he talking about himself or is he talking about another one? And Philip opened his mouth at at that time, at that point, and from that scripture preached unto him, Jesus. There are people that read their Bible, they don't see Jesus, our sanctifier. There are people that read the Bible from cover to cover, they didn't see Jesus Christ as the purifier and the refiner of the soul, as the one that will transform us inside out, outside, and inside. And so God said, Paul the apostle go and open their eyes and as you open their eyes turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive look at this number one that they may receive forgiveness of sin and number two inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in Christ, sanctified by faith, the faith of the person talking to him, Christ was talking to him, faith that is in me. He sanctifies us. 
He purifies us as we come with sanctifying faith, the faith that saves, number one, the faith that sanctifies, number two, and then we're set free, set free. And number one, we're set free from the external sin, from the branches of the tree producing sin in our life. Number two, we're set free from the inner sin. Inward sin, depravity, it sets us free supernaturally. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm reading, uh, uh, sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 22. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. You are pardoned? You are peace with God? Things are different now since I came to Christ. If any man be in Christ, born again, it says it's a new creature. Old things are passed away. You don't think about them anymore. You don't plan on them anymore. You don't go that direction anymore. Even the appearance of evil, abstain from all appearance of evil. And then in verse 23, in verse 23, it says, and the very God of peace sanctify. The very God of peace has given you peace at salvation. Pardon at salvation. And now that very God that gave you peace at the point of salvation sanctify you holy. And I pray that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can he do it? I said, can he do it? My people have gone to sleep. I said, can he do it? Look at verse 24. It says in verse 24, faithful is see that calls you. He called us to salvation. He did that. He calls us now unto holiness. He calls us unto purity. He calls us unto sanctification. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He'll do it in every heart. Peace and pardon, he'll do that. Purging and purity, he'll do that. Number three now, in the possession of power through strengthening of faith. When faith comes, we're strengthened. There's something else. Fear weakens us. Fear blindfolds us. Fear takes away our mind. Fear makes us forget where we're coming from, where we are, and where we're going. Fear makes us to forget the purpose of our calling. Makes us to forget the provision of Christ from Calvary. But when fear gives way and faith comes in, darkness will vanish away in your life. Ignorance will vanish away in your life. And that heart palpitation, and you're so afraid, can I pray? Can I go on? Can I seek the promise of God? Can I possess the promise of God? When faith comes, then that courage and that conviction that this is what God has provided and I'm going to have, you will have. I will have. I said, I will have. There is the possession of power through the strengthening of faith. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 16. It says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man now weakness comes from the inner man the man looks large the man looks hefty the man looks great